Hello. In the previous lesson, we added this large parting line between the upper and the lower portions of the mouse. In this lesson, we'll add the rest of the details and complete the mouse project. I'll just switch back to my shaded mode, so Control Alt S. So to visually distinguish the purple and green areas, I do want to put another fillet edge in here, but it's going to be a much smaller fillet edge than previously. And rather than representing a new part, this represents more of a texture shift or a material. Perhaps this is a soft touch material up here. And maybe this is a chromed portion or something in the final design. So for that, we want to have just a much smaller radius. A lot of people might not even put the little radius in here, but I think it really helps sell the design, especially in a rendering, if you were to do one for this project. Because anything you mold never has a truly hard 90 degree. There's always a tiny little fillet that catches the light, and it really makes your scenes look a lot more realistic. So I'm not going to do anything else to the bottom portion of the data, so let's just go ahead and switch that off to simplify things. So now we just have the upper and the middle layers visible. So I'll go up to Solid. I'll select Fillet Edge. And whereas before we had a 0.4, let's try a 0.1 and see how that looks for us. And I'm going to come over here to my right viewport. And see if I can just drag that. Doesn't look like I can. So I go to my perspective. And we'll click here. Now, because these two parts are actually part to part, there's no gap between them. When I select right on the edge, Rhino's not sure if I want the upper or the lower edge to fill it. I'm just going to click this one first. I could pick the other one if I wanted, because ultimately I'm just going to click in the same location again. And this time it doesn't need to ask me because there's two edges there, and I already have one pre-selected, so it knows to automatically just select the next edge for me. So I'm going to hit my space bar to apply this. And next, it's going to take us to a preview screen. And I can kind of zoom in here. And I get an idea of what's going on. Let's go around to the front area to make sure there's no strange little sections. And I think that looks pretty good. We'll just go ahead and hit Enter to apply the command. Let me hold down the mouse on our viewport options. I'm going to choose Render Shadows, which is a new shader in Rhino 5. And as you see, we have a nice little parting line here that, again, is very clean and denotes just more of a material change. And let me bring back the bottom layer, which has a much larger change. Okay, let's switch back to shaded mode. I'm going to switch off these three layers, switch back on my 2D image. So the other features we want to add are going to be this little piece that's a floating kind of a plastic piece that I have a different material finish. And then, of course, we need to add the mouse wheel in there. Let's go into the top viewport and switch on my curves. Let me make sure I don't have anything hidden that I might need. So I'll go to Show Selected Objects. And I don't have anything there I need. So I'm just going to go ahead and draw this curve in the upper viewport. So the first thing I'll do is just draw these curves. And as usual, I'm going to overbuild the curves as I'm drawing. And I'll do some trims to get these back. Let me switch to wireframe mode, and that'll pump up that curve just a little bit more. Let me switch off my center snap. Remember, center snap can be a little overpowering sometimes. And let me get that in the front there. So I'm getting a smart track off of my front end piece. I'll bring that up. And now I know that that line is on the center line. So those look pretty good. But I do want to check the perspective, because my hunch is these lines have sort of jumped everywhere on me. Yep, and sure enough, you can see they're not connected. So it's this line, this line, and this line. So we'll do a set points, and we'll get those all together. So we'll go to Transform, choose Set Points, and I want them to line up in the Z axis. So I'll switch off the checkpoints for X and Y, and only leave the Z set. So now I'll just come up here, and I'll just snap to something, and I'll just use this endpoint here. 
and now my curves are all on the same construction plane. I'll go back to the top viewport, and I'll just put in these fillets here. So I can come over, just click on Fillet Curves, and let's try a one and see if that gives us what we want. So I'll click on the sides I want to keep. So I want to keep this edge and this edge. That looks a little bit small, so let me just undo that. Let me give that a radius of two. I'll type two, hit enter. And that looks pretty good. Let's do the same back here. This time though, I'm gonna click out here and show you what happens. So I'll click there and there. Now you can see it's got rid of that line and it's just gone to the outside. So I'll hit the space bar to apply the command again. Click there and there. I think that looks pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and join these. And then we'll come over and we'll mirror these over. Select those two parts and hit join. So now those are all set and they're one closed curve. And there's my curve there. Actually, work in perspective. And I can switch a few things off there. That'll simplify things. Let's go ahead and bring the upper section back. Go to shaded mode. And I'm going to select solid. Extrude planar curve straight. I'll hit B to switch off both sides. And then I'll just drag that down through the object. All right, so I want to cut this upper piece so that it has this intersection left as well. So I'm going to go over, select Boolean Split. For our cutting object, I'm going to select this extrusion, hit Enter, and then hit that extrusion again and delete it. So now you can see we have the intersection and the outer section. Let me make a new layer, and I'll call that Insert. And I'll give that a little bit of a different color here so it really stands out. So let's move this piece to the insert layer. I do want to move the insert up, so I'm going to select it, and I'll choose Move Up from the icons. And that way, since this piece is really above the upper housing, I keep my object aligned with my layers, so my layers kind of go from upper to lower. Let me right mouse click, select Change Object Layer, and as you see, that changes to the object color. Now I want to put a little fillet through there. This time I can go to this upper view. I'll switch to shaded mode. Let me switch my curves off. And under select objects, I'm going to select curves that are left. And that gives me my curve I just created. And I'll go ahead and right mouse click and change the object layer of that. Now there are no more curves. So we'll go over, do a fillet edge. Point zero 0.01 is still set here. This time I can just drag a box around this. And it's going to go ahead and put a fillet on this edge. If I don't want that, I can hold down Control and just click on that and get rid of it. And you can see this looks a little blurry. If I zoom in here, you'll see there's actually two radiuses being called out. And one of these is going to be for the green data, while the other is for the purple data. So it's going to put a fillet on both of these pieces, just like we did with the upper and the middle mouse housings. So I'll hit Enter, and Enter again. And let me bring back the middle and the bottom, and do a Control-Alt-R for render mode. So there you go, now you can see this is really starting to come along. So we've got this little section here, and as I said, if I were to render this, this would be done in a different material that sort of pops it out from this area. Maybe it's a nice gloss plastic, or perhaps a little carbon fiber detail, or something like that. All right, so let's go ahead and add the final detail, which is the little mouse wheel. And if I go to my right viewport, and switch on my 2D images, you can see that's the detail that we're going to add right here. So this is fairly simple to create. We're going to actually go ahead and create that using just a circle, but we're going to choose the circle diameter method. And the reason we're doing that is if we start with the circle from center, I'm not sure how far I'd have to click here and then drag out to make the circle the size I want. Because remember, this curve actually is much larger. It's probably down in that area somewhere. So by using the circle diameter, I can click here on the upper edge 
and just sort of drag down until I get a shape that's about the right size for me. I'll select that object, I'll go to the top viewport, and let me switch these layers off just so I can see my sketch. And I'll select solid, straight, and I want to hit B and enter for both sides. And I think I'll go a little bit larger than this wheel is actually created in my sketch. And I'll bring back these layers. And because they're all selected, if I click the icon for the light bulb on one of them, it applies it to all of them. And you see it brings that back. Let me switch 2D images off. Now I want to put a nice fillet on here, but I do want to know what size this is. So I can go to my grafting tools. Select this end and this end, and I'll just zoom out a little bit. So I can see that 7.91 is the distance between those two edges. So if I go back to my standard toolbars, select Fillet Edge, and I'll make that about a 3, and that should give me the result I want. That gives me kind of a nice looking wheel. I'll select that object. I'll choose the Curves layer and then create a new layer, since I know it's going to create my layer below that one. I'll just call that Wheel. Change Object Layer. and Let me just change the color of that. And now all I have to do is cut out a little area for this to give it some breathing room or room for it to actually spin around in. And I'm going to come back out to my right viewport. And I'm going to choose my ellipsoid commands. And I'm going to choose my ellipsoid diameter. I'll drag something just a little bit bigger. And I go back to the right viewports. And I just kind of drag this up. It looks like I'll need to scale this just a little bit. I can see in here is right where the object is breaking through the surface. So I'm just going to squish this just a little bit. So I'll do that with a one-dimensional scaling. So I'll select that piece, this piece, and just kind of scale it down like that and bring that up again because I don't want that to dig too far into the object. So now we have that. So we'll select this. We'll do a Boolean difference. I want to change my delete input to equal yes, and that way it'll get rid of this. Enter. So I can see that kind of pinches things a little bit, so let me just go ahead and undo that. We're just going to scale that 1D in the top viewport this time. That looks a little bit better. And I might actually bring that down just a bit more. About there should be good. And let's do another Boolean difference. Select the cutting object, hit enter. You can see I get a little bit more room around this. And we'll go ahead and put a fillet on this edge here as well. Select fillet edge. And let's try a fillet of one. Let's see what we get. Click chain edges. Click this object. Go a little larger on that. Let's do a 1.5. That looks pretty good. And there we go. We'll switch to rendered mode. Let me remove any curves that are in here. So I'll select curve. Change that to my curve layer. And let me also switch to rendered shadow layer. See if that makes any difference. Doesn't change the display a whole lot. And there we go. And I think that looks pretty good. This completes the lesson on designing and building your own project mouse.